Now what you'll need to participate in this experiment is an oscilloscope. Now it doesn't have to be a particularly good oscilloscope. In fact, I could virtually say, without saying virtually too many times, that virtually any oscilloscope will work with this because all we'll be doing is looking at sine waves in the bandwidth of 20 Hertz to 20K. Now, even if your oscilloscope is a thousand years old and is analog or digital, it will be able to display that frequency at a, at a flat response. That's, that's all it needs to do. All of my music these days is contained on the hard drive of my main computer in the lounge. And for many years, I've been using Apple iTunes. But I'm now delighted to say that I have an Apple-free home. There is not one Apple product in the house at all. So that's got to be a plus. We won't go into the details as to why I've made this monumental decision, but I have. Now, that obviously leads to a problem. How do I play my music? And I've been experimenting over the last year, I guess, with various players, VLC, Windows Media, and countless others. All of them have an, have an issue. I have quite a, a, um, a large library and virtually all formats you can imagine. As I've been converting uh, my, or I, at one time, well, one time I had thousands of CDs and they took up virtually a whole room. But things move on and then I, I decided that if I play a CD, there might be one track or three or four tracks I want to play. And then it's almost like the old days of vinyl when you had to get up after two minutes to change the disc. Well, that's nice and I do miss that, but the novelty wears off very quickly. So something like iTunes, where you can have your whole library and you can just make a playlist depending on your mood, seems to suit me very well. The only issue I had largely with iTunes is that it won't play FLAC and that was the format that I, I chose to upload my um, or is it download my CDs because so many people will rip their CD into some tacky format like mp3 at some silly three bits per second or something silly like that and wonder why they sound like rubbish and if that's your major source of music you can't ever go anywhere from that if it starts out sounding like crap it will always be crap and there's nothing else you can do so the logical thing would be to download them as um, wave files but the files are horrendous in size. Well, they're, they're CD length. Um, and you don't really want 700 megabits per CD. I, mean, that, I know uh, hard drives are relatively cheap these days, but that's a bit much. So the, the obvious thing is a, a, loss, a lossless file. And the two that come to mind, of course, is Apple lossless as I was on iTunes and many of my songs have been ripped to that format. But FLAC is used throughout the world, I guess, and I can't detect any audible difference between the Apple lossless and the FLAC, which is as it should be because it is a lossless format. And um, at least then if I want to rip them down to a, a smaller size for use on my telephone, you can always go down, but you can never go up. So anyway, I'm rambling a bit, sorry about that. Um, the problem with the Apple lossless is not every format will, will play them. So that's one of the reasons why I decided to go for a new player. So. We're finally getting around to what I was having a look at. 
and the point of this video. I don't know why I'm looking at my computer because there's nothing on it <laughs> except a picture of me looking at you. <clears throat> so I wanted to find out whether the various audio players sound any different to each other. Now if you if you play them analogly so to speak in other words from loudspeakers from a small amplifier directly from your computer you're relying on the D to A converter in your computer which can vary between being fairly okay and pretty awful really so I tend to use a coaxial digital link and use the D to A in my main amplifier which is somewhat better quality. Now on that basis any music player that formats out as a digital signal should sound theoretically the same um, but they don't they don't sound the same it's close I mean you're not looking at chalk and cheese but all um, all um, music players don't sound the same now the figures that I'm going to talk about are based on the fact that I'm using it out of the box because things like VLC players there's a billion things you can adjust and I have to confess that some of the parameters are way above my head and I don't know what they do so I, I virtually use it out of the box the only thing I do is is tell it to output in digital format rather than analog format I wanted to just check some basic things about the audio players and I've started by selecting the three players that are actually on my computer. One of them is the VLC and one of them is the, the Windows uh, player. And the other one is a program which I've, I, I've got to replace the iTunes, which is Music B, which I actually like pretty well. It's, it, it does everything that I want and it will play the formats that I want, which is even more amazing. I have to say, however, that at the moment, these tests that I've done are based on analog outputs um, only. So if you're using, I've, I've yet to do any tests to see whether the um, frequency responses that I've found are the same on the digital output. But why they should be different on the analog output, I don't know. So let's get on with the tests. Now, all I'm using the scope for is to test, is to show that the frequency response is flat and the tone that I'm using is, is one of John Audio Techs that he's kindly uploaded for the general public. I'm a member of the general public. Thanks, John. Um, and it, it's a flat sweep. I've, I've checked it over and it's within point 0.1 of a dB from 20 Hz to 20K. I'm going to show you three sweeps, um, one from each of the player, and then we'll talk about it afterwards. There's no point in you listening to it, because I'm sure everybody knows what 20 hertz, well, perhaps not 20 hertz, but what the audio bandwidth sweep sounds like. And it makes it, it just drives you nuts after a while, Well, it does drive me nuts anyway. So we'll start off with the um, Windows player. And all I'm going to do is look at the front of the scope and I've adjusted it so that it literally, um, with reference to one kilohertz, fills half the screen. You'll see what I, what I mean in a second. And what you can see on there is a one kilohertz tone. And I've frozen it so that it, um, because the, the tone only runs for 10 seconds or something. But that's where it will see. Now I've adjusted it there solely because it fits the bottom of the screen and the top of the graticule there. I suppose it would be just the same if I put it in the centre, but this, this one you've got the reference at the bottom and the peak at the top. Now that's set at one kilohertz and what I shall do, I shall just make the time base that little bit bigger 
and I shan't touch anything on the scope at all. I should just start the um, tone and you'll see from down here is or will be the frequency that's coming out. Now as it's a bit small I will read out the frequencies and you will see what's what's going on. Right here we go that's now one kilohertz two three four five six and as you can see it's going up and the response is pretty flat just coming up to 10 kilohertz now Twelve kilohertz, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and it and it stops. Now, as you can see, for all intents and purposes, that is flat. Right, the same test now with the VLC player. Start. Starts at 20 Hz, exactly the same as the other one, and I've adjusted the reference level so that it fills the screen, well, half the screen, as you can see. And we're now coming up to 5K. Still quite nice. Flat as flat can be. gets exciting in a minute just coming up to 10k now now watch what happens when we get to about 15k 12k 13 14 15 now look what's happening 16k 17k 18k and if that's just gibberish this and it started again right there we go picked up at 20 Hertz as per the other one and we're now up to 2k things are looking okay levels okay but now things are starting to go a little bit funny at 5k there's some strange wobbling effects and noise we're now up to 7k now look what's happening What's all that? Now we're coming up to 10k. Now we've got harmonics and, 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 and mess all over the place. 12k, 13k, and you'd think that was hum superimposed on that, but it's not. I'm going to play this file in a minute and you'll be able to listen to it yourself. 18k and it runs off the end and you're left with the residual noise Well, interesting results. I'm not sure it's a terribly scientific 
result. But um, I'd be interested if anybody out there watching has an oscilloscope and would like to go to the John Audio Techs site and look at his video and also download the tones and sweeps that he's been kind enough to provide and do the same tests. I'd be very interested to hear if you get the same results or hopefully you'll be able to come up and say Mike you're an idiot you should have done this or this or this which I'm quite prepared to hold my hand up um, it's, one of, it's one of those things that you think you're doing the right thing um, but at the moment I can't explain the results particularly as the music B player sounds pretty good thanks for watching bye